Einstein becomes, if I understand correctly, a pacifist. And we have his support of US military nuclear efforts in World War II. Obviously, it's not a contradiction. This is an evolution. This is something that, in hindsight, he looked back at and said, made a mistake, shouldn't have done it. It was really fundamentally a pacifist. So there were two cases in which Einstein champions something akin to militarism. So he, in the early 30s, gets an offer from uh, Caltech, one of the premier uh, engineering universities in America, in outside of Los Angeles, come spend the winters here. Now, who doesn't want to spend, you know, winters in California? And in 1933, that's where he was when Hitler was elected. Couldn't go back to Germany, and but he still had some things in loose ends in Europe. He had to tie up, so he went back to Belgium. World War II has begun. He, you know, was this world famous pacifist. Belgium was putting together a robust army, as robust as it could, to keep Hitler from invading. And the Belgian pacifists said, Einstein, please speak to us and champion our cause. And Einstein refused. And they said, well, you're not a real pacifist. And he said, well, I do not believe that the military should ever be a mechanism of foreign policy. But you don't understand, Hitler is Hitler. You need to defend yourselves. If you're pacifist, he's gonna roll over and murder you. You can't let this happen. And a similar thing happens in America during the war. He's on vacation out on Long Island. And an old friend of his, Leo Zillard, who was a Hungarian physicist, was the one who realized how E equals MC squared could actually be put into use. So Otto Hahn was a, a, a German physicist who first split the atom, realized, you know, oh, this is not just theory, this could be practiced, but no one thought it could ever be, you know, really turned into usable technology. It was Zillard who was, he had fled to England and he was driving in London, which meant he was sitting in traffic. And sitting there, he realized suddenly how it could be done. Uranium, uranium was the key. And he thought, oh my gosh, this could not only be used for energy, this could be used for a weapon. And when he came to give talks at Princeton, Word had gotten around the physics community that Werner Heisenberg of the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, who was a German nationalist, was part of a German weapons program. And Szilard thought, well, if I thought of this, Heisenberg could think of this. Hitler could get atomic weapons. And so he had a, a colleague of his, Eugene Wigner, who was also a Hungarian refugee, but who was now at Princeton, they track down Einstein, they show up unannounced on his doorstep, he invites them in for lemonade, and Zillard tells him. And Einstein immediately realizes, we need to do something. So they try to figure out what to do, and the ultimate decision is, we'll write a letter to the president. Well, it had gotten late, they had to go back uh, to New Jersey the next week, Wigner had a talk to give in California, so a different physicist who had a car drove him out. This was Edward Teller, who ended up being the father of the hydrogen bomb. And they write the letter. Einstein dictated, uh, Teller wrote it down, Zillard translated it, and they had a short version and a long version. They ended up sending the long version, which, and you know, to make the story short, ended up launching the Manhattan Project, which created the bombs. The war ended before Hitler had gotten it, and the US, of course, dropped them on Japan. Einstein was mortified. There's a common quotation whose origin I have not been able to nail down. So I don't know if it's legitimate or not, but it's, it's quoted in many Einstein uh, sources. 
where he says, I could burn my fingers that I wrote that letter to Roosevelt. So he becomes a spokesperson against nuclear armament in favor of nuclear disarmament, even though, yes, he was the person who launched it out of fear. It was an existential fear. If the Nazis got the bomb, this could be the end of humanity. And so he was a pacifist, but in this case, he thought the situation was so dire, it's self-defense. 